Welcome to our 2018 Green Oaks, Libertyville, Munline, Vernon Hills, Ask the Mayor's Luncheon. This is a luncheon that's been going on for several years and it's always a great chance to have our mayors in front of us and talking to the business community. I want to thank Post Time for being our host today. They've, I hope everybody got enough to eat. It looks like we got plenty of food up there, so make sure that you um, take advantage of it. My name is Scott Adams. I'm the GLMV president, and with me today is Karen Lavers, our chairperson. I'm going to let Karen say a few words. Welcome, everyone. Wow, this is one of the largest lunches for the mayors that I have seen in a long time. I want to thank all of you for coming, and you're going to have a wonderful time because I know they're all excited about all these great things they're going to tell us, right? Yes. yes. Right? Yes. Big things with all four villages. Wow, and we're so proud, so very, very proud to be part of the four villages. But the best thing is you people. We are so happy that you're part of our chamber and it's our family. So thank you so much for coming today and if there's anything that Scott and I can do for you, please don't ever hesitate. We're there for you. What do you think? Yep, that's great. Thanks, Karen. Okay, uh, you know, we're very fortunate to live and work and play in, in such a dynamic atmosphere as we do with our four communities. Um, we got thriving businesses, we got, you know, state of the art schools, lots of attractions, and great recreation areas for everybody to enjoy. As such, GLMV is, a, is, is once again pleased to present the largest annual forum for GLMV mayors to address the business community. So we'll hear from them shortly. After they're done making their presentations, we'll, we'll take time for some questions and answers as well. Um, but first, I want to recognize a few people. And first off, I want to recognize our lunch sponsor today, President Circle member, Libertyville Bank and Trust, Mudline Community Bank, and Vernon Hills Bank and Trust. These three banks have been valued members and community members for many, many years, and we really appreciate all that they do. I want to ask Steve Madden to come up for a moment. Scott, thanks. Uh, and thanks to everybody for coming out today. I see a lot of familiar faces here, and we are very pleased to be able to support the, the communities uh, in which uh, we call home. And uh, again, thank you, and thanks to everything that the Chamber does. It's been a great partnership, and we look forward to continuing it. Thanks, Steve. You know, we, um, we're, we're blessed. You know, with the four communities we got, we have you know, we're, it's kind of the hub of Central Lake County, and it's, I think it's an important thing to remember because all four communities really work very well, hand in glove, cooperative services and things of that nature. And I think because of that cooperation, it's one of the reasons why this is such a dynamic area and such an area that everybody wants to move into. So first up, I'm gonna ask uh, Mayor Bernie Waisaki to come up and do his presentation. Bernie, welcome. Okay. Okay. okay, welcome to Green Oaks and to Post Time, where everyone's a winner. <laughs> no, no, does anybody here want a, a winner for me? I'll, I'll tell you who's going to win in the next race. But anyways, uh, thank you. Um, I'm really happy to be here. It's uh, been a while since uh, I've uh, been able to tell all of you of all of the exciting things that are happening in our village. Uh, I have been on the village board for 31 years, uh, the last 12 as mayor, and I've enjoyed it. I have a very excellent board. Uh, their combined uh, number of years that they've been on the board is 77 years, so uh, they have a lot of experience and uh, we work well together. Um, I'm a little nervous because Carol has her button uh, to push here on the uh, slides and it's kind of like, you know, you're not sure who the person is in the White House that has their finger on the button all the time. <laughs> yeah, it is scary. Um, okay, 
what you see there is the uh, outline of my uh, uh, talk. Um, you can press on to the next. Uh, uh, and again, I apologize for those of you who had to look at my face the whole time while you were having lunch. Um, I was the one next to the nuts, in case you were wondering. All right, so Green Oaks uh, in uh, Niche Magazine uh, was rated number nine in America out of 12,622 public schools uh, rankings. Um, they uh, compose Oak Grove School and Roundout School, and they're K through eight, both of them, uh, and uh, it makes up uh, a community that is uh, one that um, parents are very involved and the uh, zoning the way it's set up in Green Oaks is on the west side of the tollway are all single family homes on the east side of the tollway where you are right now is the area that we annexed in 1990 which is the old roundout area and uh, this is what we're redeveloping you can pass it to the next one. Uh, that same uh, organization rated uh, Green Oaks as number 33 in America as one of the best places to raise a family in America. Uh, out of 15,735 towns that they uh, actually uh, surveyed. And you can see what the uh, criteria that they used uh, for that uh, assessment. Um, next one then, Carol. Last year, the Oak Grove School uh, was a national blue ribbon school. It's, as I said, K through eight. And an uh, organization called greatschools.org. Uh, they evaluate school districts uh, for parents and students. Um, and they rated mm -hmm. uh, both Roundout and Oak Grove is nine out of 10, which was on their scale outstanding. And um, both schools, year in and year out, uh, continue to be in the top 10 of all math, science, and reading scores. One thing that we're always very proud of in this village is that we do not assess any real estate taxes. And so we have to watch our pennies very, very closely. We have to uh, make sure that uh, um, all of the funds that we have are accounted for because we don't know if the sales tax next year is going to be changed by the state or the income tax rate that goes to the villages will be changed or motor fuel tax. So all communities, you know, are in uh, with uh, the state being in such terrible financial situation uh, needs to always uh, watch their funds very closely next one uh, carol oh yeah now, this one is uh, uh, something that this past year i'm very proud of uh, of our board uh, intergovernmental agreements uh, where we uh, agree and contract for services with other communities and other governmental units. So the first one you see there is administrative adjudication system. We entered into an intergovernmental agreement with the village of Libertyville so that um, our uh, zoning violations or local ordinance violations uh, could be adjudicated in their same uh, format and it uh, saves us a lot of money for legal and, and judges and, and uh, uh, just time of our staff. So we appreciate the help that Libertyville gives us. Road maintenance. Uh, we entered into an intergovernmental agreement with the Libertyville Township Road Commissioner Marty Neal, uh, who now helps us with some of our snow plowing, salting, uh, pothole repair, uh, and uh, it allows, again, uh, us to be able to help the uh, township 
uh, keep new equipment and keep men working uh, while we provide them with the jobs that we uh, have for our village. Uh, it saves us a lot of money since we then don't have to uh, have a big salt mound or a big, uh, uh, a large amount of equipment or employees. Uh, the next one there is the fire and rescue ambulance. Uh, this past year we uh, had uh, two large, very large, senior living residences and we entered into a intergovernmental agreement with the uh, uh, Libertyville Township Fire Protection District uh, where part of the monies that we receive from a TIF district uh, goes to help uh, for additional ambulances that will be used for uh, these senior living areas and to our village. Uh, we have also, I'm still there, <laughs> uh, we also had uh, uh, a intergovernmental agreement with the Sheriff's Department. They provide us with uh, uh, poli police protection and we just entered into purchasing additional time uh, from the county so that we have a sheriff's deputy during the uh, early school hours and then at rush hour when the kids are getting off of school. Um, uh, by and large, we don't have any crime, so knock on wood, uh, we, we haven't had to use the sheriff that often. Uh, one last one that isn't up there that we just finished concluding intergovernmental agreement with the tollway uh, so that uh, they're going to uh, replace the bridge uh, this summer on Atkinson Road in the tollway and Bradley Road in the tollway. So if you use any of those uh, roads, uh, you're forewarned. Okay. Um, this is the first of our two senior living centers that you may have passed it just kitty corner from here is the Green Oak Senior Living and it's uh, this past fall the GLMV uh, had a ribbon cutting there and it was uh, beautiful. Since then uh, I've been there two other times and, and they've incorporated themselves in the village very nicely. Uh, they had a uh, uh, art display and they had uh, all of the budding artists from the schools and the high school uh, there uh, that they showcased their uh, artwork and it was uh, a great opportunity to meet uh, some of the new residents of our community. Uh, the next one, Carol. This is the second one that we have which is the uh, Sheridan at Green Oak Senior Living Center and that's located on Waukegan Road and that also opened up this fall. Uh, along with that uh, particular area, they built a uh, commercial retail center uh, right on the corner of Atkinson Road and uh, Waukegan Road, so it's right across from uh, Abbott Laboratories. And it, uh, uh, if you uh, are in need of uh, some more retail space where there's a lot of uh, traffic that goes by, that might be a good location uh, for your future business. Next one, Carol. With the uh, two senior living centers, we were able to use them as an anchor for our TIF districts, which is tax increment financing. Uh, as I said, we don't have a real estate tax, so to finance some of these projects, uh, the taxes that those uh, particular units uh, would go to the village in order to uh, improve some of the blighted area in Roundup. So uh, this is a, uh, now before our planning commission uh, of a uh, development uh, right across from Lamb's Farm, right by the tollway in 176, uh, vacant area there. Uh, CIT Trucking is a, a retail trucking uh, group that uh, uh, sells uh, large cabs and uh, they are located throughout uh, Illinois and Indiana and Missouri, so they will bring a large amount of sales tax, and they would be in that uh, purple shaded area there. Um, Inland uh, Development is uh, going to also build a, uh, a light industrial unit 
uh, in the green shaded area in the back there. Uh, and uh, the orange area is uh, retail space, which would be like your gas station or convenience store or mall food, that sort of thing. And uh, uh, you can move to the next one, Carol. With that TIF district, uh, we would be expanding Bradley Road, which is the light right up here. It would then be a four-way light, and uh, we would improve that road. Uh, to the back of the Harley Davidson motorcycle uh, to allow uh, uh, easier ingress and egress from uh, the location that we were just talking about. Along with that, uh, we will start this summer on some long awaited uh, West Roundout drainage improvements. So we're putting in uh, major uh, storm sewers uh, on the area along. 176 here, which uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, industries and, and businesses along there have uh, wanted for a long time, and now we have a means by which to uh, sponsor and pay for those uh, uh, improvements. Okay, the last one I just wanted to show you is our, our park, uh, Kath, Lake Catherine, and the reason I show you that is uh, the, the good people of uh, Green Oaks this past um, three years, each fall go out and uh, cut down invasive species known as buckthorn. And this is the clear out uh, from uh, our lake that uh, you couldn't see on 137 until they actually uh, cut down some of those, uh, those, those uh, invasive uh, trees. And uh, they have done it in a couple of other areas in the, the village, and they got a grant from uh, ComEd to help uh, pay for some of that uh, tree removal. But it was a lot of sweat equity on the part of our residents. So uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I apologize for my backside to you. And uh, uh, again, welcome to Green Oaks. <laughs>